Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I now call the May 24th, 2021 meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. Uh, my name is Julie Jacobson, town manager here in Auburn. And I just have to go through our standard statements that we read while we're having a remote meeting. Uh, this open meeting of the Town of Auburn Board of Selectmen is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, which suspends the requirements of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. All members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. The public may join the meeting remotely by telephone by calling 1-408-650-3123 and access code 235-235-861. Or the public can join via computer at uh, global.gotomeeting.com backslash join backslash 235-235-861. Please note that this meeting is being recorded by Auburn Cable Television. And please note that each vote taken during this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website and the public is invited to follow along using the posted agenda. So before we go to the first agenda item, I just wanna confirm that all members and persons who are anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. So when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Dan Carpenter, I, I don't see on here. I don't believe he's going to make it this evening. Lionel Bertham? Yes. Kristen Liberty? Yes. Scott Wren? Yes. Sarah Ruffley? Yes. And thank you. Town officials and employees participating, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Assistant Town Manager, CFO, Ed Kazanovich? Yes. And Administrative Assistant, Sharon Kwiatkowski? Yes. Great. I also want to acknowledge that Adam Menard, our town planner, is on as well. Uh, he's going to be speaking when we get to the item on the open space and recreation plan update. So I just also want to mention for the public, we do have a public hearing on a petition by National Grid and Verizon for a joint or identical poll location on Oxford Street North. And there's a call-in number for those who want to speak during that portion of the agenda, which is the public hearing. Is there a representative from National Grid and or Verizon who's joining us this evening on this call yet? Uh, seeing none yet, I will move on to the first item on the agenda. Uh, tonight's agenda following the election of May 18th, 2021, is the annual reorganization of the Board of Selectmen. This meeting is being consistent uh, with the town charter to uh, have a reorganization following the election. So I just wanna take the chance to congratulate Tristan LaLiberty and Sarah Ruffley for their win last week. And uh, Tristan, welcome back on the board and Sarah, welcome to the board. We look forward to it. So uh, what happens in this case is uh, as as this is your reorganization meeting, I just run this just as part of the agenda, Sarah. Uh, so I, I call for the nominations and I'll, I'll walk you through it. And then once a chair is elected, I turn it back over to that chair. So I will now open the nominations for chairman. I'd first like to join uh, you, Julie, in, in congratulating Tristan and Sarah on your elections. Great job, guys. Uh, and I'd like to make a motion to uh, nominate Tristan Liberty as the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Great, thank you. Selectman Wren has nominated Tristan Liberty as chair. Are there any of the nominations for chair? I'll second his nomination. Okay, seeing none, um, the nominations are now closed. So I just wanna uh, go through the press again. So Selectman Wren has nominated Tristan Liberty as chair and I see there is a second from Selectman Berthew. So now I will go through a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Berthew? Yes. Mr. LaLiberty? Yes. Mr. Wren? Yes. And Ms. Ruffley? Yes. So congratulations on a vote of four to nothing. We have a new chair of the Board of Selectmen, Tristan Liberty. That's awesome. Look forward to working with you. Anything we can do to help you through it, you know we're all here for you. Thank and you, now, appreciate that. It is really my pleasure to turn it back over to you because this is the part I don't like, <laughs> is having, <laughs> to do, having to do that part. So um, thank you and uh, congratulations again. And it's all yours, Tristan. 
Thank you, Julie. I wish we could motion to have you continue to run the meetings, honestly. Um, but uh, with that, I will um, open up nominations for vice chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to nominate Scott Wren for vice chairman. Okay, we have a nomination by Mr. Berthium of Mr. Wren for vice chairman. Can I second the motion <laughs> as chair? I'll second the motion. Okay, and we'll have a second by uh, Mrs. Ripley. Uh, are there any other nominations? All right, seeing none, I will close the nominations. So we have the nomination for uh, Mr. Wren by Mr. Berthium, seconded by Mrs. Ruffley. Um, by a roll call vote, Mr. Berthium? Yes. Mr. Wren? Yes. Mrs. Ruffley? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Congratulations, Mr. Wren. Thank you, guys. Congratulations. All right. <clears throat> so moving on to the agenda. Um, our first item is a public hearing by National Grid and Verizon New England joint for identical pole locations on Oxford Street North, uh, except 6 p.m. It's now 6.06. Uh, is there a representative from uh, National Grid and Verizon New England? Uh, yes, uh, Steve Susie from National Grid. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Um, since there's a representative present, uh, I'll entertain a motion to open the hearing. So, so moved. Moved. Second. All right, motion's been made by uh, Vice Chairman Wren and seconded by Mr. Berthium. Uh, by a roll call vote, Mr. Berthium? Yes. Mrs. Ruffley? Yes. Vice Chair Wren? Yes. And the chair votes yes. All right. Um, can the representative please give their name uh, and spell it for the record? Uh, Stephen with a V um, and Susie, S-O-U-C-Y. Thank you. Um, can you tell us briefly um, why you're before the board and what this motion's about? Well, yes. Um, for the, um, you know, the school project here that is, is going on um, at Three Vinyl Street, um, you know, we have to move or relocate the pole uh, five feet. Um, it's an existing pole, but if we move it more than three feet by state law, uh, we have to get a new pole a pe petition approved. So basically what we're petitioning is to move existing pole 39 just about five feet back. Uh, that will allow us to um, remove a push brace uh, that is existing. Um, it will make um, the pole line between 41, 39, and 38 straight, so we don't need that. And we need to upgrade the uh, the pole um, so we can have um, install an under new underground riser that will uh, service the new uh, school apartment building complex, uh, which is now being constructed. All right, thank you. I should have pointed this out beforehand, but members, you do have the um, petition and a map of um, the project in your packets. <clears throat> uh, do members have any questions uh, at this time? All right, seeing uh, none. Oh, just one Mr. question. Well, is there, there won't be any substantial periods of power outages for the residents in the in the area, right? Or will you do your best to mitigate those? That? Uh, yes. It, um... Yes, it, you know, basically it should be live line transfer. If it is, it would only be a momentary thing because we would put the pole up first and then we would, you know, transfer the wires. It'll take us several hours, but a lot of times they do that live line. And if it is, it'll just be uh, momentarily. Um, and if we do need, if they decide, hey, uh, this is what we need to, you know, we need an outage. Uh, we'll notify people, and there's a uh, notice process for that. Um, usually, just like you, uh, we give notice uh, of customers of a planned outage in their neighborhood. I think we get we have to send out notices. I think it's uh, at least 10 days. It might be 14. I forget the exact number of days. But there's a set number of days uh, that we would send out notice to the customers if we um, decide to do that. And uh, most of these are done as live line transfers. Excellent, thank you, sir. 
All right. Do other members have any questions? All right. Seeing none, I'll ask if there are any um, if there's any public comment. I don't see anyone on, and um, to my knowledge from town administration, no one has reached out. But is there any public comment at this time? All right. Seeing none, uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. All right, motion to close the hearing has been made by uh, Vice Chairman Wren and seconded by Mr. Berthium. By a roll call vote, Mr. Berthium? Yes. Mrs. Ruckley? Yes. And Vice Chair Wren? Yes. All right, the chair votes yes. The hearing is closed. All right. Uh, is there a motion regarding the petition? I'll make a motion to approve the petition by National Grid and Verizon New England for joint or identical poll locations uh, to be moved as uh, put forth in the presentation. Great. The motion's Second. been made by uh, uh, Vice Chair Wren, seconded by Mr. Berthium. By a roll call vote, Mr. Berthium? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Ruffley? Yes. And Vice Chair Wren? Yes. And the chair votes yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, moving on. Communications, we have none. Board of Selectmen general items. Uh, we have a transient vendor license uh, application for Fork and Delicious. Nice name. Um, and enclosed are the application documents and recommendations from the DCG. Uh, this had come before us last week, but we had postponed it until all members of DCG could look over the application and there were no objections. Um, is there a representative from Pork and Delicious on the call? Doesn't appear to be. Um, it is up to the board to make a motion to approve the license. Um, since the DCG has not raised any objections, uh, I don't know if it's necessary to have the applicant here, um, but that's up to the wishes of the whole board um, from my understanding of what we've done in the past. So. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I, you know, I kind of feel like when somebody's applying for an, a new license, um, you know, they, they should take the time to come on. This is the second meeting now that uh, somebody hasn't been on to represent. Um, I don't know if it's their thought that they don't need to be on to represent, but we generally, I personally like to hear, um, you know, obviously I know it's a mobile food truck, but, you know, like to hear what their thoughts are hours of operation um you know what what where where they're looking to uh spend their time um you know what what their their goals are um so you know if it was some somebody going for a renewal um you know i'm, I'm more apt to to you know just let let the license uh continue but uh, I don't know. I just kind of feel like somebody should should come on when they're when they're applying for a new license in town. Uh, so I personally won't make a motion to uh, to approve this until I hear from somebody. Okay. Uh, we'll say that we the reason that we didn't have them last week was because uh, not all members of the DCG had seen it. It wasn't um, on their end for missing the meeting. But I also noticed that our, the town manager wanted to say something, so I'll yeah. recognize her. <laughs> through the chair thank you i was just going to say what you just said we had uh two weeks ago when we initially put this item on the agenda we had reached out to the applicant uh through the uh one of the members of the dcg uh, lieutenant lemon because uh, he had not had an opportunity to review the application and uh, under the town's bylaws we do have to do a fingerprint quarry on these license applicants so we just wanted to make sure that was done so we had told the applicant not to come to the last meeting and i admit i don't know if the applicant was contacted last week uh because i wasn't here um sharon do you know if anyone reached out to the applicant during the week 
yes, Rachel had reached out to them after uh, the chair, uh, Mr. Liberty, and Ed met on the agenda, and we knew it was going to be on. Okay, so perfect. Asked, thank it you. It was supposed to be here. Okay, thank you. So, uh, to to Mr. Berthiam's point, so he. Uh, this particular meeting, he was asked to be in attendance. It sounded like he was going to be, and uh, for whatever reason, is not on this call. Okay. Um, Sharon, would we have to take a um, motion to table this item um, till our next meeting in order to avoid approving or denying it tonight? Um, you can take a motion to table. It's not a public hearing, so there's not... A the uh it wasn't advertised for a certain time so if you okay. chose to just table it to the next meeting you could do so okay i'm uh through the chair i'm I, I mean i appreciate the fact that the vetting was done by you know the departments that be in town um but to lionel's point this application really it actually says that it's going to serve tuesday through fridays in worcester and that events in the surrounding towns so it really doesn't tell us too much, so I certainly appreciate. I mean, I'm not generally unopposed to this, but I, I'm, I think I side with Lionel that I would like to see the applicant just to know more about what business they're going to be doing in town. Okay. Uh, other board comments? You know, it sounds like we're uh, there's. Mr. Mr. Chair, yeah. um, does does anyone have uh, knowledge of this person that? Um, should we have, uh, would it be possible to, for, for somebody to, to reach out uh, and see if they can get them on the line? The only thing I'm thinking is, uh, you know, I, I stand by, uh, you know, not doing it if we can't get the person on the line. Um, but I also know that next weekend is Memorial Day weekend and uh, for food trucks and things like that, it, it is a, a big weekend. So, it, does anybody know this person personally, or um, do, do you, you know, maybe uh, through the chair to the town manager, uh, is would it be normal for us to give a courtesy call um, to see if we can get them before the meeting's over? Uh, sure. I the only number I have for this individual, by the way, I, I'm I'm not familiar with him personally, uh, but. There is a phone number on this application that I'm happy to call. I can put myself on mute and reach out. Uh, he, again, that we did have Rachel in my office reach out and speak to him last week. Uh, and he was aware even two weeks ago that we were putting it back on the agenda today. <coughs> Pardon me. So I'm happy to mute myself and see if I can reach him on this one number. Is that something that you think we should do, Mr. Chair? Uh, yeah, if the town manager is willing to do that, I think we can. Uh, I don't know if we've done this while on a Zoom call, but we can go into recess uh, to give her the chance to do that and then see uh, if there's a response. Uh, we can probably just move to a different item uh, for uh, purposes of the meeting. We can. Um, sure, we can do that too. Um, it's not a long one, so that's why I was suggesting recess. Yeah, we just have the, the reappointments. Um, and then we'll need the town manager again, but I'm sure Ed can, can speak to some of it. So uh, if she's not back by then, uh, but yeah, let's, let's do that then. Uh, so let's hold off on agenda item 5A. And can I have a motion to move up agenda item 5B? Motion, motion moved to move up uh, agenda item 5B. Second. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry. Let me, uh, can we do 5B, 1, and 2? Oh, never mind. They're both under 5B. I'm sorry. Um, motion been made by Mr. Berthiam. Second. Made by Mr. Berthiam, seconded by uh, Vice Chair Wren. Uh, by a roll call vote, Mr. Berthiam? Yes. Mr. Wren? Yes. And Mrs. Bruckley? Yes. All right. So under agenda item 5B1, Finance Committee members Edward J. Coleman, uh, who would like to be reappointed, and uh, Mr. Coleman, yeah, to a term expiring June 30th of 2024. Uh, since it's a reappointment, Mr. Coleman is not here. Um, because the board has usually not asked members to come in uh, if it's for reappointment. So 
with that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion uh, that we reappoint Mr. Coleman to a term that expires June 30th, 2024 to the Finance Committee. No second. Motion been made by Mr. Berthium, seconded by Vice Chair Rent. Uh, by roll call vote, Mr. Berthium? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Ruffley? Yes. And Vice Chair Rent? Yes. And the chair votes yes. It's unanimous. Um, moving on to 5B2. Zoning Board of Appeals, um, members Peter E. Jones, Richard G. Cussey, and uh, Robert J. Tatro would like to be reappointed to the ZBA uh, for terms that would expire in June of tw June 30th of 2024. Um, once again, members that are being reappointed were not asked to come in. Um, so do members have comments or a motion? I'll, I'll make, make a motion. Oh, go ahead, Scott. Okay, I'll make a motion to appoint Mr. Jones, Mr. Cussey, and Mr. Tatro to the ZBA for a term that would expire June 30th, 2024. A second that. All right, motion been made by Vice Chairman Wren, seconded by Mr. Berthium by a roll call vote. Mr. Berthium? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Ruffley? Yes. And Vice Chair Wren? Yes. And the chair votes yes, it is unanimous. At this time, the town manager is back, so I'll turn things over to her. Hi, thank you, uh, through the chair. So I did reach uh, Mr. Winchester on the phone number that was listed, and uh, he would like, he, he said he appreciated the board wanting to give him the opportunity to speak. He wants to make sure he has all of his paperwork in order, so he asked that he be put on to the June 14th meeting, which is the next meeting agenda. He just wanted to make sure uh, that the police department didn't need anything further. I, apparently he had provided some documentation for the fingerprint, uh, Corey, and he's just waiting to make sure that everything is all set. So uh, if you could kindly put this off until June 14th, if we have all the information from Mr. Winchester and the police department, we can bring it back to the board for consideration. Okay. Um, is there a motion to hold? I would make yep. that motion. Mr. Burton. Okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, is there a second? Second. I'll second. Right, so there's a motion to. <laughs> I wanted to give you your first second. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, motion has been made to hold agenda item 5A transient vendor license application for Fork and Delicious to June 14th of 2021 by Mr. Berthium, seconded by Mr. I mean, uh, by Mrs. Ruffley. By a roll call vote, Mr. Berthium? Yes. Mrs. Ruffley? Yes. And Vice Chair Ren? Yes. And the chair votes yes. It is unanimous. Moving on, we have gift acceptances. There are none. Uh, proclamations and recognitions, we have none. Town manager items. Uh, we have the update on the RFP for property acquisition by the town for the police slash fire slash ambulance public safety complex. So I'll turn things over to our town manager again. Great, thank you. Thank you uh, through the chair. Yes, we wanted to provide a brief update to the board on the RFP for the property acquisition for the potential uh, public safety complex. As you know from uh, prior presentations, the town, in order to move forward to determine what the total cost estimate would be for this project, we need to know how much the cost of the land acquisition is. And given that the town doesn't own any land that is sufficient to support a public safety facility, we're required to follow chapter 30B under Mass General Law, which means that we have to go out to bid uh, for the acquisition of properties. So the town just can't say, we like property X and we're gonna make an offer. Uh, so under chapter 30B, we have to solicit bids from property owners. So we did put the, uh, we put this RFP out into the central register. I put in for it, I believe just about two weeks ago. So it would have run in the central register either last Thursday or the Thursday before. So it's definitely been in the central register, which is a requirement under 30B. It will also run in the Auburn News. 
on two consecutive dates uh, in June. The proposals are due to the town on June 30th. Uh, the reason for that date is you have to back into that date for all the advertising requirements. So you have to advertise in a newspaper of circulation in the town uh, a minimum of eight days prior to the bid closing. You also have to have a pre-bid uh, meeting and then you also have to advertise before that second time uh, at least one other time. So when you added in all the dates for this, we pushed the date out to June 30th. So we hope to get some proposals then. Uh, we are reaching out to some uh, brokers to just let them know that this RFP is out there. Uh, some people have asked why we don't post it, the, our, the actual RFP on our website. And the issue is that uh, we are required under Chapter 30B to maintain a list of everyone who requests the RFP. So if we have to make any kind of addendum to it before the proposals are due, we're then required to reach out to anyone who took a copy of it. Uh, so we don't want to miss somebody by putting it out on the website. We wouldn't know who to reach out to. So people are welcome to call our office or email our office and we can send it to them electronically. We just have to make sure that we have their name contact information and email address so that if there is an addendum we can get get it to them so it is available electronically you just have to call the office or come into the office and pick it up as you know we're open uh regular hours now so that is the process we're hoping we get a bid or two on this so we have some land options to look at and from there we can uh start some public meetings which we are in conversation with the public safety advisory committee on having some public meetings, uh, potentially one in June, just to remind everybody that this process is underway. And then again, likely in July, and then according to the schedule we have provided to all of you, uh, we would probably be looking for the board to take a vote in August, if the board desires to put a ballot question on a special town election ballot uh, for sometime late in September for a debt exclusion vote. But we don't wanna bring that to you until we have a total project estimated cost. Thank you. Uh, do members have any questions for the town manager at this time? There's been no responses on the RFP, right? Uh, correct. There have no, been no responses yet, but I would say it hasn't gone in the Auburn news yet. Uh, and it's only gone in the central register and you don't always get the property owners looking in the central register. So I, uh, we are actually reaching out to some brokers that we're aware of that do a lot of uh, business in town just to see if they might have any uh, clients that are interested in bidding. And we're also going to let the Auburn Chamber of Commerce know in case there are any business, uh, industrial, commercial property owners who have property that they may be interested in uh, putting up as an offer to the town. So I think that's why we wanted to make sure that we had plenty of time, Mr. Wren, for this um, to give people time to put something together because the advertising deadlines, if, even though we get them in two weeks in advance, sometimes you, you just don't see them for a couple of weeks. So we'll do a lot of outreach and hopefully uh, by may, mentioning it tonight as well, we may get some uh, property owners that realize that this is out there and they're interested. Thank you. Do any other members have any questions? All right, seeing none. Uh, we'll move on to agenda 6B, which is open space and recreation plan. You'll see the paper in your packet and I'll turn it over to the town manager again. Great, thank you. Uh, and I also had uh, asked Adam Menard, our town planner, who's, you can see his camera is on right now, uh, to give an update uh, through the chair to the members of the board and the public on the open space and recreation plan, what we're doing in this upcoming meeting that we have in June. So I'm gonna turn it over to Adam. Uh, hi, thank you. So I'll just give you a brief background. Some of you may already be aware of the um, projects that's been going on. Um, about six months ago, the Open Space Committee was formed to begin the pro process of updating the town's 2014 Open Space and Recreation Plan. Um, the current plan expires uh, November this year. Um, so it's important to have an updated plan um, that helps with uh, along the town pursue certain grants. You kind of need this plan for a certain grant, especially through uh, DCR. So uh, the current status is the Open Space Committee has been meeting monthly uh, 
for about the past six months to um, work on the plan, kind of develop um, strategies to go forward and what kind of goals and objectives the town should pursue over the next seven years and beyond. Um, there was a survey that was conducted this, this spring. Um, about 200 people took the survey and we had some good response, some good ideas. So um, the flyer you received in your packet is an advertisement I'm putting out on the town's website, social media, posted around uh, places around town um, for a kind of a public meeting, kind of a public forum um, as an opportunity for um, for feedback for the public to provide the committee and myself some feedback. Um, I'll be doing a presentation um, and to explain what the plan is, provide some of the survey results, and again, to just gather some, some more input. We want to know where the town wants to go, what kind of projects we should look into, um, what we should study, what we should pursue. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we are. The plan is to have the a final draft of the plan submitted to the state this fall. So we've got all summer really to, to work on, on the final product. So if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Do members have any questions or comments? Just a comment. Um, initially on the, the survey results, it looks like there's a pretty good appetite for more walking trails and, and hiking trails in town. Um, I personally hope that the residents were going to ask to make Pakachog 18 holes, but that's, I think I'm the only one there. Um, but no, we've made some good progress in the open space committee. Um, Adam's done great work over there. Other questions Thank or comments? You. Okay, seeing none, I just want to add, um, I've seen some comments about anything water related. Of course, we had the swimming pool that uh, we discussed a while back, but um, there's always talk of doing something uh, with Rotary Beach. I imagine you're going to get input on that. Um, but I just wanted to thank you, Adam, for all of the work that you've done with uh, the surveys and with this. Uh, it, I took the survey and it, it was really well done. So thank you for all the work you put in. You're welcome. Mr. Chair. Right. Mr. Berthier. Yeah, um, was, was there also... Um, any talk about with with the new guarded park that there might be uh, some area near the water there uh, that that eventually may be for families or is, is that um, something that that I'm dreaming up? Yeah. Uh, through the chair, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer a little bit and then turn it to Adam because coincidentally we had a meeting today with CMRPC because we're still moving forward on some of the. Uh, plan design options for Goddard Park. And we actually talked a lot about uh, the water primarily not being for swimming, but for being for other utilization at Goddard Park. But I'm gonna let Adam explain some of the concepts that we're looking at right now. And then of course we need to look at cost of these. All right, uh, thanks Julie. Um, so as Julie said, we met with CMRPC today. Um, expect to have a report of the results of the Garda Park survey that was done this past spring um, within the next month or so. Um, some of the, the highlights were a walking trail um, around um, the pond um, through the park. Um, other amenities would include possibly some kind of a dock or a deck along the water with you know, pick, pick benches, tables for people to sit and enjoy the water, to, to fish. Um, some improvements um, near the dam, kind of an overlook uh, with historical signage. Um, you know, the Polaris missile is there as well as a model of the original guarded rocket. Um, sprucing those up, I think, uh, would be high on the, the list at some point, as well as possibly a fountain in the pond, which, um, aside from being uh, a scenic aspect, would help improve the, the water quality by injecting oxygen into the water. Um, it's kind of a, 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 I'm not sure how well the, the water flows in that area, but the, the, you know, the, the fountain will help, help that aspect. Um, and, uh, 
I mentioned at the meeting this morning, uh, it's coming up on the 100th anniversary of the, the Goddard launch. Um, it's five years away, so um, those improvements will be timely to celebrate that big anniversary. Fantastic. Thank you. Mr. Worthing. Yeah. No, I was just saying, you know, updating that, uh, the plans on the Goddard Park. Other comments or questions? All right, seeing none. Um, thank you, Adam, again. Appreciate it. Mr. Chair, if I could, I just, while we have Adam, I just also want to thank Adam for all the work he's doing on the MVP grant uh, and the work that we're doing on the Leesville Pond. I know last week, uh, at, at one point, it was supposed to be a Saturday back in March or April, and we surprisingly had snow at that time. I think it was in April, so we had postponed it till the weather was better. And on election day, uh, Adam and many of our town employees um, and department heads and division heads uh, spent time down at the high school uh, educating the public and doing outreach on water quality, water quality control, Leesville Pond, how to help the community. Uh, and they just, they did a great job. They put a lot of work into it. And I think the end product is gonna be uh, excellent, definitely worth doing. But I just want to acknowledge Adam's work on it. I know Bill Coyle, Joanna Paquin, Jolene Coyle, a number of people were there during election day just to provide outreach to the public. So I want to thank Adam. And Adam, is there anything you want to add about it? I think you had, you know, a decent turnout because we we did it with the election to try to get more people there. Yeah, I think we did have a, a good good turnout. Um, I think pairing it with the election really, really helped draw people. Um, there, you know, there's currently, if you if you walk by the the, the, the walk shop as it was called, there was many signs up. Um, all those, all the signage is now at the library. Um, if you call and set up a nice display right as you walk in, you can see all the signage. Um, everybody that um, stopped to talk to us, seem engaged, uh, willing to learn about uh, ways to improve water quality. So I think it's gonna be a real benefit for not just the Eastville Pond, but for all the water bodies in the area. Thank you again, Adam. And thank you, uh, Mrs. Jackson, for bringing that up. I should have mentioned it because I did say hi to you, Adam, on, the, uh, on election day, and it was good to see you there with everyone else doing that. Uh, I'm glad you had high turnout because our election did not. Um, but it's good that you were able to reach out and talk to people. Um, so with that, we'll move on to uh, table items. And we have none. And Board of Selectmen member items. So uh, for those members that were here at our last meeting, um, and now we'll add uh, Sarah to you, you to this. Uh, our former chair, Goodrich, brought this up. Um, the request to begin changing uh, the board's name to a more gender neutral term uh, from selectmen to select board. Uh, we noted that other communities have already gone through this process and started it, uh, or actually have gone all the way through it and now have uh, the new name. It had wide support from the board at that time. So um, uh, I think this is something that it looks like we're going to pursue. Uh, I don't know if we necessarily need to establish a whole subcommittee on this because um, I don't know what the process is. I don't know if uh, one member wants to spearhead this. Uh, so I'll turn it over to members who have any ideas or suggestions on what they'd like to, to do with this um, item. Mr. Chair, I, I personally uh, am all for just uh, making that change. So I think it's just a matter of uh, finding out uh, from a legal standpoint or a charter standpoint uh, what steps need to be done uh, and then uh, just getting those uh, in, in action completed. And uh, I, I'll go out on a limb and say I think the, the whole board is going to be in favor of it. Um, so um, let, let's let's do whatever we got to do to get it started. If If you feel that you want to do a, a subcommittee, um, you know, I'm happy to, to get on that subcommittee, but I don't think it's not necessary. I think it's just a matter of finding out the uh, protocols and procedures. 
No, I would agree with you. Um, so with that, I guess I'll ask the town manager, do we, um, the process for going about finding, or really for finding out what this process is, um, do you know if we'd need to consult town council or, or what the steps might be? I, I'm not sure what the steps are, so let me look into it and then report back to the board, uh, see if we can do a little research and find out what the process is. I know, I believe anyway, the, the former chairman Goodrich had mentioned that there may be a legislative process that would mm -hmm. be involved. I, I think there may be a, a need to consult with town council on this as well, because the charter does have certain language in it. So I, I don't know if the process that's handled on the legislative side would then uh, enable us to do that through the charter, I, it, it might. So let me have an opportunity to look into it and I can report back to the board on what steps you need to take. Okay. <clears throat> uh, do other members have any comments? Uh, Mr. Ron, I saw that you. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, that's a really good point, Ms. Jacobson, um, because it may not be so simple if we have the, an amendment to the town charter, I can't, I have to imagine it's no small feat. Okay. That's All correct, right. uh, correct. Uh, an amendment to the charter is, is a very lengthy process. Um, it's not that easy to just, but a, a change of name may not be something that would require an amendment in the charter. Into that guy's okay. So it may a, avoid that. So that's, I, I just don't know the legal answer to that. So we'll find out for you. Okay. All right. Very good. I, I just request that we keep this on until we get the information that we need to, you know, know how we can move forward with it. Great. We'll get Thank on you. it. Thank you. Um, Ms. Jacobson, do you want that in the form of a of any motion actually we don't have vote on this item but um i, I don't know if you actually need it and that's one. okay I, um i'll just I, I don't think you need to make a motion i'll just uh let you know that we will definitely look into this we'll talk to town council we'll look into it legislatively and we'll report back to you once we get all the information okay great thank you um so is there anything else on that before i move on seeing nothing um you have the minutes from our april 12 2021 meeting are there any corrections or omissions seeing none i'll accept them as read and with that i'll entertain a motion to adjourn mr chair I was going to say, do we want to let Ms. Ruffley make our first motion? <laughs> sure, I make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second that. All right, motion to adjourn has been made by Ms. Ruffley, seconded by Mr. Berthium. By roll call vote, Mr. Berthium? Yes. Uh, Ms. Ruffley? Yes. Vice Chair Wren? Yes. And the chair votes yes, it is unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Have a good hey, night. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.